Hey everybody, <clears throat> we're going to start talking about electric field lines. Uh, this draws on a lot of the concepts that we've talked about with the electric force. So the electric force, which we, we find using something called Coulomb's law, remember that was Fe equals kq1 q2 over r squared. This force is a field force. Okay, it's not a contact force. Contact forces are things like friction, applied force, tension, normal. Those are all things where forces are uh, being created by contact. Field forces, like electric force, means things get pushed and pulled without ever touching. Okay, the most familiar uh, field force that we have is gravity. Okay, you don't have to be touching the earth to be pulled downwards. Right? If you drop a ball from your hand, the ball is not touching the earth, yet the earth is pulling the ball down. The earth is exerting this force on the ball. Same thing is true with the electric force. Charges don't need to be touching to push each other around. So if we drew a picture of the earth, and we have some object up here with some mass, If you release that object, the Earth is pulling on it, that object is going to move downward. Right? The force on the object, due to gravity, is pulling it towards the center of the Earth. The further that object is away from the Earth, the less that force becomes. Like if I drew this object way out here, if you're looking at almost double the radius, it still has the same mass, but the force pulling it down is a little bit less. The further you get away from Earth, the weaker that attractive force becomes but it's always pointing radially inward towards this Earth. Same thing is true with charges. Let's say that you have a charge here, a big, uh, let's call it a big negative charge, negative Q. If you put a tiny little test charge, we call it a test charge because it's, it's not big enough to push um, Q around, we'll just put a tiny little positive charge out here, it's going to be attracted to our big negative Q charge. Okay, opposites attract. That force that's going to be exerted on it due to Coulomb's law is going to be pulling it downward. This is our electric force. The closer this test charge gets to Q, the stronger that force is going to become because that, that force is related to R. We look in our equation, you've got R squared on the bottom. The bigger R is, the weaker the force is. But the smaller R is, the stronger the force is. So if this test charge was over here, it's got a much larger force pointing towards Q. Draw it a little bigger. Right? If it was way out here, that force is much smaller. So where do these field lines come in? So field lines are a way to represent the effect that this electric force has in different places. So notice in our drawing with Earth, at the two different places that our mass is located, the force is different. Okay, It's weaker, um, pointing in different kind of directions. Field lines are going to help us to uh, visualize where objects are getting pushed around depending on where they're located. So, for example, if we look at the field lines around the Earth, the gravitational field lines around the Earth, they are radially pointing inward towards the center of the Earth. These are gravitational field lines. They represent what direction a mass would get pushed if it was released. So if you have a mass M out here, it's going to get pushed tangent to these field lines. It's going to get pushed tangent to the closest field line. Okay, and field line through that point. If your M was out here, you can imagine if there was a field line, it would be pointed this direction. I should make that about the same amount of force as the other one. Now, the other thing is the closer your uh, field lines are together, the stronger the field is at that point, the stronger the force is going to be. So at this point here that I'm drawing M, that force is going to be bigger than the other two that are drawn because the field lines at that point are closer together. Whereas 
Now here the field lines are pretty far apart, so the field is weaker out there, meaning the force on the, on the mass is going to be a, a weaker force pulling it towards Earth. Whereas this guy that's really close, the field lines are close, so the force is going to be bigger. How does that relate to charges? Same exact way. Wherever we draw field lines, the closer those field lines are together, the stronger the force is going to be. So there's a few rules with drawing um, field lines, and let's get into those. First rule is that we're going to draw field lines from positive to negative or infinity. Okay, lines start in a positive and go into a negative or into infinity. Uh, and vice versa. You're never going to draw a line coming out of a negative. It can go into a negative or from infinity into a negative. It can go either from positive into negative or from infinity into negative. We'll get into examples here in a minute. Second rule, the direction of the force the electric force at a point in the field is tangent to the field lines at that point. And again, we'll do examples of all these. I just want to get the rules written down first. Next, the closer together the field lines are at a point, the stronger the field will be, and so will the force. So the stronger the field and force will be. Fourth rule, field lines never cross, nice and simple. Last rule, the number of field lines into or out of a charge is proportional to the charge. So the bigger the charge is, the more, more charge something has, the more field lines it's going to have. So a charge of plus 1 and a charge of plus 2, the plus 2 must have double the number of field lines shown compared to the plus 1. So let's take a look at this. I've got two charges here. Right now, uh, the two dots have charges of 0, charge 1 and 2. One's on the left, two is on the right. So there's no field lines shown because neither one of them has a charge. If I make the first one have a charge of 1, plus 1, notice we get some field lines drawn. They're drawn radially outward, and they're coming out of our positive charge. Okay. If I make it a plus 2, watch what changes. You've got double the number of field lines. Again, they're all coming radially outward from the positive. Same thing, plus 3. You've got 3 times the amount of charge uh, of field lines as you had at the beginning. 4 and 5. Lots and lots of field lines. If I back that back down to 0, and I take a look at charge 2. Let's make charge 2 negative. So if I make it negative 1, now our field lines are coming inward. Okay, we still have uh, these lines drawn radially inward to draw the direction that a force would be. But now they're pointed in. Negative 2 negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. Let's take a look at what happens when you have multiple charged objects nearby each other. Their fields interact. Okay, So if we make our charge 1 a plus 1, and we make our charge 2 a minus 1, watch what happens. The field lines interact in such a way that the field lines coming out of the positive 
a lot of them, looks like six in this case, are going directly into the negative. Okay, positive towards negative, that was one of our rules. Notice at different places, you're gonna get uh, a field strength that is different. So for example, if you can see where my mouse is wiggling around, way out here in open space, the field lines are farther apart. So if you were to put a charge there and look at the force that's being exerted, that force would be a lot smaller at this location way out here than it would compared to the force at a location here where the field lines are closer together. The closer your field lines are, the stronger the force. Notice our field lines from positive can go into infinity. That's all right. No big deal. Same thing for the negative. Field lines can come in from infinity. That's all right. We do have to look that since our charges are plus one and minus one, you have to have a, uh, a proportional number of lines. So you have the same exact number of lines coming out of the positive as into the negative. If I start changing that ratio, now I have double the amount of lines coming out of the plus as I have going into the minus, showing that the charge here in the red is t uh, twice the charge of the minus. Same thing with three and four and five. Lots more field lines coming out of our positive than into our negative. Notice now when I've changed the charge one to be a plus five, it's really gonna be pushing force, pushing charges uh, away from the plus one. If you put a positive charge anywhere near this red, this red charge, they're gonna get pushed away very, very strongly. These field lines are very close together. What if we make our charges both the same, whether positive or negative? So if they're both positive, that's fine. The fields will interact in a way that shows that these two charges are repelling. Okay, if we were to drop a charge somewhere in between these two um, red charges, it's going to get pushed kind of away from both of them. If it was a positive little charge that we dropped in between, it's going to get repelled by both. Same thing if both were negative charges. Okay, you can see their fields are sort of repelling each other. Let's take a look at this little simulation. I've dropped a positive and negative charge down on this grid. The uh, white lines here represent the field lines. The darker the white line is, the stronger the field is at that point. So the, you can see the field gets weaker and weaker the further you get away from the charges. And if I put a sensor down in this field, the sensor acts like a tiny little positive charge. So you can see the direction of the force on this tiny little charge when I put it at different locations in the field. Right here, you've got a strong force tangent to the field line pointing away from the positive towards the negative tangent to the field line. If I put it Right in the middle here, the force grows a little bit. If I put it out here, it's tangent to the field line. Tangent, 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 tangent. The closer I get to these charges, that force gets really, really, really big. If I put my test charge way out here where the field lines are way further apart, that force gets much weaker, but it's still pointed tangent to the field lines. Lastly, let's look at one example just drawn here. You've got a positive charge and a negative charge. This is plus one and minus one. So if I drew some field lines in here, let's just draw maybe five lines. Remember they come out radially from the charges. Five coming out of the plus, five going into the minus. Now I've added some charges here, A, B, C, and D. A, B, and C are all gonna be protons, positive charges. D is going to be an electron, so it has a negative charge. I want to draw with my red marker here the direction of the force at each of these points and relative strength. So at A, so tangent to where the field line would be at A is going to point to the right or left. And since A is positive, it's getting repelled by a positive. Field lines are kind of far apart, so I'm just going to draw a little force uh, tangent to the line. B is also positive, so it's going to be pushed away from the positive charge, tangent to where a field line would be. That's going to be a big, strong positive, uh, big, strong force, tangent to where a field line would be at point B. At point C, C is positive, so it's getting pushed away from the positive towards the negative. The field lines out here are pretty weak; they're they're spread far apart. So tangent to that field line would be to the right, and it's not going to be very big because the field lines are far apart. Lastly, you've got particle D, which is an electron, so it's going to be actually repelled by the negative, so the force is going to be pushing away from that minus charge in the direction of the positive charge, but it's got to be tangent to where a field line would be at point D. Field lines here are fairly close together, so I'm going to draw this force down and to the left. And it's fairly strong because the field lines are 
getting closer together because we're 